boys and girls, and welcome to Teaching Through Television with Beaufort County School District and the County Channel. I'm Mrs. Bramlett, and I teach first grade at Robert Smalls International Academy. I'm excited to be with you here today. We're going to learn about using arrays to solve repeated addition facts. Let's go ahead and get started and take a look at our learning target for today. Our learning target is, I can find the total number of objects in an array by using repeated addition. I can then write an equation to show how I found the sum. We're now going to look at our math vocabulary for this standard. The first one is repeated addition. That is adding the same add-in or number over and over. In this example, you see 4 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 12. Our other vocabulary word for this standard is array. An array is a set of objects or numbers arranged into equal rows and columns. Now you may be wondering what is the difference between a row and a column. If you look here at the picture, we can see that rows are horizontal. That means they go across an area and columns are vertical. They go up and down an area. So today we're going to solve some repeated addition equations using arrays. If you look at this picture, we can write a repeated addition fact using rows with the example of 4 plus 4 equals 8. Or if we add the columns, we have 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 8. Okay, watch me now as I use an array to create and solve a repeated addition problem. We have some red apples here and for the purpose of this lesson we're going to draw circles to represent our pictures. So we have four rows of three. So I'm just drawing my circles to represent my apples. And then I'm going to write my digits. Now when we're solving repeated addition facts using arrays, we can go back to some strategies we learned in first grade and in kindergarten. One would be to use double facts, the other would be that you could skip count. Here we're going to use double facts. 3 plus 3 is equal to 6, and then we're going to extend this to 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. So we've added our rows, now we're going to add our columns. 4 plus 4 is 8. We can't forget about this digit here, boys and girls. We've got to count up four more for a sum of 12. So you should have the same sum. Let's check our work. If we added using rows, it should look like this. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 12. Or adding using columns, we have 4 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 12. Okay. We're going to try one together now, so I want you to get a piece of paper and a pencil and come join me. Okay, you should see some frogs on the screen. Where again, we're going to use circles to represent our frogs, and we have three rows of two. So I'm going to draw those circles. And write my digit. Okay, let's take a look at these digits. What strategy could we use here? Would we skip count by twos? Can we look for double facts? For this particular one, let's skip count. 2, 4, 6, 
So our sum is 6. Now we are going to go and we're going to add up our columns. The double fact 3 plus 3 equals 6. Again, you should see the same sum. Let's check our work together. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6 or 3 plus 3 equals 6. So what do you notice, boys and girls? The number sentences are different, but your sums are the same when using arrays. All right, we're going to try another one together. This time, we're going to use some ladybugs. So we have three rows of five. No circles in there. We're going to write our digits. Think about what strategies you're going to use. Use what works best for you. I'm going to skip count by fives. Five, ten, fifteen for my sum of my rows. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to check my columns. We're going to use double facts here. And 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. But don't forget, we have to add up our last digit, which is 3, for a sum of 15. Again, our sum is the same, but let's take a look at our equations. For our rows, we have 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 15. Or for our columns, we have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 15. Okay, now it's time for you to try one on your own. So, Let's get started. Take a look at the pretzels. Look at your rows and your columns. Draw your circles to represent your array. And then I want you to write your number sentences for both. Let's take a look at what yours should have. Again, I'm going to draw my circles. I have three rows of three pretzels. I'm going to find my double fact of three plus three is equal to six. Then I'm going to add up three more for a sum of nine. Now I'm going to move to my columns. and I'm going to do the same thing. What do you notice here, boys and girls? Think about it for just a second. Your sums are the same, but let's take a look at your number sentence. It stays the same. Three plus three plus three equals nine. You had three rows of pretzels, and you had three rows or three columns of pretzels. So, this means a repeated addition sentence does not change when you have the exact same number of rows and columns. You're doing great. Let's try another one on your own. Okay, I see a lot of blue cars here. 
So we're going to work on our array first. We have four rows of five this time. So you see how I'm lining up my circles so that I keep my work area nice and neat. I'm going to write my digits to represent my circles. Again, if you want to use double facts, that's great. If you want to skip count by fives, that's also great. So we have 5, 10, 15, and 20 for a sum here. Now let's go check our columns. Fours. All right, I'm going to use my double facts. 8 plus 8 is 16. Don't forget to count up four more. And you should have the same sum once again. Let's take a look. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is equal to 20. If you're doing a repeated addition sentence for rows or if you're looking at columns, you would have 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 20. Okay, now we're going to try some word problems, boys and girls. So listen as I read this one to you. Rayana has a garden. She planted three rows and four columns of lettuce. Draw an array that shows what her garden looks like. Write a repeated addition sentence to represent your array. Okay, let's see what this looks like when we draw our array. We have three rows of four columns. All right, so we write our digits. 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. We're going to count up 4 more for a sum of 12. And now we're going to move to our columns. I see more double digits, boys and girls. 3 plus 3 is 6. And 6 plus 6 is is equal to 12. Your sums are the same. Let's take a look at what that looks like. 4 plus 4 plus 4 equals 12, or 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 12. Again, remember your sum should be the same. All right? You try one now. Listen as I read. Ryan cleaned his room. He put his cards in five rows of two on his dresser. Draw an array to show how he placed his cards on the dresser. Write a repeated addition sentence to represent your array. Let's see what Ryan's cars would look like in an array. So we have five rows of two. Write our digits. Again, go back, think about what strategy would I use here. I'm going to skip count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10 is our sum. Now let's add up those columns. We have the double fact of 5 plus 5 with a sum of 10. And our sums are the same. Let's take a look. 5 plus 5 equals 10. Or 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 10. 
You're doing great, boys and girls. I'm so proud of you. All right, let's try just one more. I'm going to read it to you, and then you try it on your own, and then we'll check it together. Maya's mom bought a carton of eggs from the store. The carton shows two rows of six eggs. How many eggs are in the carton? Draw the array to support your answer. Write a repeated addition sentence to represent your array. All right, give it a try. Okay, let's take a look at what you have. Remember, the carton has two rows of six eggs. So look at what we have. We have a double fact again. Six plus six is equal to 12. Now let's go over here and add up our columns, boys and girls. Let's skip count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And our sum is the same. But let's look at our facts. 6 plus 6 is equal to 12 if we are adding rows. If we're adding columns, your repeated addition sentence is going to look like this. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 12. Good job, boys and girls. Now I want you to take some time during the day to find some arrays in your home or around your yard. Let's look at some of these images. We see cookies on a cookie sheet. What do you notice? Do you see an array there? Look at your donuts. When someone goes and buys a dozen donuts, look in the box. That's actually an array. You can also choose some of your favorite candy and set up arrays just like these gummy bears. Or if you're in the grocery store and picking up a case of water with mom or dad, look at your case. You have an array. Counters are also great for showing arrays, and then one of my very favorite are the Legos. Look at the top of the Legos. Do you see the arrays there? Make it fun. See how many arrays you can find in your home. Okay, boys and girls, I'm going to take a couple of minutes now to speak to your mom and dad about how you can continue your learning from home. Parents, one thing that you can do with your children to encourage them um, to learn their arrays is to take an array scavenger hunt around your house and yard. Your child can then write repeated addition facts that represent the arrays. Another thing you can do is use objects around the house. Teachers are very resourceful, so we're always used to using what we have already. You could use dried beans, marbles, or buttons if you're outside. You could even use rocks or use sidewalk chalk to draw arrays and practice that way. The good thing about arrays is once the children have mastered addition, they can easily transfer this into multiplication and further their learning in math that way. That makes multiplication um, visible for the children and that's a good strategy for them to use as well. This concludes our lesson on using arrays for repeated addition facts. Thank you for joining us today and I hope that you will join us for future episodes of Teaching Through Television.